All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand upon the video that you guys just watched about Niels Bohr. And what I'm going to do first is explain a little bit about the energy that's involved with electrons in general and then explain his model one more time for you. And then we're going to get into calculations for determining what the energy involved is. So to begin with, as was noted in the other video, if I have an electron right here, in order, it, in order for it to move energy levels, to go from this second energy level right here, so this is energy level two, so let's say energy level four, so it's gonna jump to energy level four, what has to happen is that it has to absorb energy. It's going to absorb a very specific amount of energy, as we'll see, but what's happening is it's going from the ground state, where it is stable, to a higher energy level, and at that higher energy level, it's going to be excited. It's in, we say it's in the excited state. Now, as we've already discussed in this class, the main concern in chemistry is what we consider to be stability. Right? If an electron is in the excited state, that atom is not stable with that, uh, with that electron in the excited state. And so what will inevitably happen is that that electron will go from that energy level four, fourth energy level, back down to the second energy level. Now, in order to go from the ground state to the excited state, the electron had to absorb energy. In order to go from the excited state back down to the ground state, that electron had to release energy. And that energy is being released in the form of light. And so we're going to look at how this helps us to prove Bohr's model in just one second. Now, what Niels Bohr said was that energy is quantized. And what in the world does quantized mean? Well, quantized means that the energy of an electron can only have specific energy values. In the video you guys watched before this, she described a piano. So the fact that you can play a C on the piano and you can play a C sharp, there's no note in between. It's very distinct. The example I like to use is a bookshelf. So if you look at the bookshelf right here on the left-hand side, you've got a first level, n equals one, that's your first energy level, energy level two, three, four, five. Now, if I'm gonna stack books on this bookshelf, I can't stick books in between, like right here, because there's no shelf to hold the books. That concept of no shelf to hold the books applies perfectly to Bohr's model. The fact that you've got this energy level right here, energy level one, n equals one, this energy level, n equals two, n equals three. You can't have any electrons in energy level 1.5. Okay? There is no energy level there. An electron can't exist there. Okay? Now, where in the world did he come up with this idea? Well, what happens we just went over what happens when an electron is provided with energy. It goes from the ground state up to the excited state. When it releases, when it goes back to the ground state, it releases light. And so what he saw was an atomic spectra. So let me explain that really quickly. An atomic spectra, you take an element and you excite it, and you excite the electrons of that element. And if you take that light that's produced, and it's able to be divided up using a prism, what Bohr saw was very distinct lines. Now, if rather than having very specific energy levels, electrons were able to exist wherever they wanted to, if you excited the electrons and they were allowed to go wherever they wanted to go, you would see a continuous spectra. You would see all of the colors of the rainbow, all right? But instead what he saw was very specific lines, which told him that electrons could only go from, for example, energy level one to four, 
back down from four to one. So it released a very specific amount of energy. Then, for example, electrons could only go from energy level two to energy level three. When they drop back down, there was a very specific amount of energy that was released, and that's what's represented by these lines. So it's not like we can go from here to here, from here to here. It's not like there's an endless number of possibilities. It's a very discrete number of possible movements that the electrons can make. So going from energy level four down to energy level two, going from three to two, there, there are only a certain number of combinations. And that's what he saw with the atomic spectra. Okay. Now, as we will see very soon, his model is flawed. And in fact, this is not what electrons do. But for our purposes right now, that's what we're going to assume. Now, we're talking about energy being released. As you can tell, each of these lines also has a very specific wavelength and a very specific frequency. So now what we're going to do is we're going to relate the concept of energy, quantized energy, very specific amounts of energy, to the concept of wavelength and frequency. And so we've got a formula that we're going to use. And this formula tells us that the energy, E, equals H, which is Planck's constant, which I will explain in a second, times your frequency. Now, just a couple of things to keep in mind. Your energy, the units for energy, are joules. The units for frequency are seconds to the negative one. And so Planck's constant, the number, the value, is 6.626, .626, so four sig figs, times 10, to the negative 34th. Now, the units for energy need to be joules, so we've got to get joules in here. So joules go there. Times, well, this is the same thing as saying one over seconds. So to cancel out one over seconds, this just becomes seconds. So these are the units for Planck's constant. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one of the practice problems and then I'm gonna assign another practice problem for you to do. So in this first example, it tells me that tiny water drops in the air disperse the white light of the sun into a rainbow. That's actually a continuous spectrum, okay? just in case you were interested. What is the energy of a photon from the violet portion of the rainbow if its frequency is 7.23 times 10 to the 14th. So my equation is energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. I'm looking for my energy, so I'm gonna put it right here. Notice how I'm showing all of my variables. Something that you guys like to do is kind of just take a shortcut and not show all your variables, which you will see is gonna be tricky when I also incorporate wavelength into this. So please show everything. Times H, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. My units are joules times seconds. And then I'm gonna multiply this by my frequency, which is 7.23, oops, times 10 to the 14th. And my units are seconds to the negative one. And so what I'll do now is I'm just gonna multiply these two values. Notice my seconds will cancel and then I'll just be left with joules. So when I multiply this, I get 4.79, because I need to round to only three sig figs, times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And so what this enabled me to do was relate frequency, right, the number of times a crest past a given point in one second, it enabled me to relate that to the amount of energy, which is the concept that we are learning up here, the concept of very specific amounts of energy, the fact that energy is quantized. It's not continuous, they're very specific quantities. And so what I would like you to do now is you're gonna go on to page 71, okay? And I would like you just to complete, because these videos were a little bit longer than I had expected, just to complete number two. Okay? And that's all you got to do.